Hi everyone. Well, we are almost there. We are at the 11th and final round of the 2013 British Chess Championships Major Open section. And the last um, day of staying as well. And I was, um, my ECF of being tied at this point was probably 350. Um, I was playing William Armstrong of 1919 Day, so I've got someone over 1900 on 3.5 out of 10 in the last round. But his ECF is only 147. So I was hoping for some um, big fat juicy three day points. But on the ECF this is a big game this. For my ECF. And now I wasn't sure what to play. I had to look at it in the previous night. And against 1e4 he plays both Sicilian and 1e5. I didn't feel like my Royal Lopez is strong enough yet for this section. Especially against an old guy who's probably knows the 25 move reputations and that. Um, and I felt confident with the C3 Sicilian but there's no guarantee I'd get one. And then, and then I thought I saw I had a game against one B three at last year's, and I thought I decided I've got to play at least one one B three at some point. And he played the most weirdest anti one B three line ever, and he got pasted with it. So I fancied um trying one B three again, but I didn't do any prep with it against his line, which was a bit stupid because I didn't think it repeated. it. Also, he is partially sighted, um, and he is an ex Braille champion, it seems. So anyway, 1b3 was played, e5, bishop b2, and now he played it again, he played e4, and I don't know, this just cannot be any good moving the same pawn twice, I just don't see why this can be any sound at all or anything, I just don't understand it, there is garbage, but for some reason I didn't know what to do against it, and I just had decided to chip away at his um, pawn immediately. So if he takes, then actually I was going to take with the queen and castle queenside very fast. But he played knight f6, defending the pawn. So I attacked it again. I also could, could consider this. But his knight could become quite annoying. Maybe this is a move. Stopping d5. But he just goes back with tempo. I'm not sure where my queen goes. Is any good. Maybe this continuation. I'm trying to cast the queen side fast to get an attack. I attacked it with knight c3. And he spent ages on this on b4. I spent it about 15 minutes. I played bishop b4. Which leads to a position where black will maintain his strong pawn in the centre. But he'll have to see the bishop pair. And my b2 bishop becomes unopposed. So I was happy to accept the bishop pair. I thought this is very good for me. He castled. But this pawn is still very annoying. So I decided to try and open the position up as much as possible for my bishops and eliminate that pawn at the same time. But maybe it better was to play just e3. And save d5. Not that. Just develop. But I wanted to castle queen side still and I felt my position was very awkward. It was hard to get my queen to a good square so I took it. To open the d file for my queen, takes back. I retreat the bishop because I want to keep this bishop, and I've also maybe got queen d4 cheap holes potentially, which are nullified with his next move, knight c6. I also have to watch out for the open e file against my king for our castle. I played e3 to neutralize that and also get a new piece into the game. d5 was played, which cements his knight. I put my best developer's bishop. I played knight f3. Now his bishop came to f5. I thought it might come to g4, but I don't think that really achieves anything. So I can always just play bishop e2, and I usually put my bishop on the square anyway in this line. My bishop f5 also points to my um, c2 point if I dare castle queen side. I decided at this point to play bishop e2 to get the last piece into the game, because the bishop is pretty useless on all the other squares. And now he played knight g5. So. Which is an interesting move. Maybe try to get on my um, king side in case of dead castle king side. And if I take it, his queen comes into the game with tempo, which cannot be particularly great. Although actually I can afford to stack the g2 point because I get the pressure on g7 in return. Held by this wonderful bishop, in fact, if h4. And if queen takes g2, bishop f3. Queen moves back, h5. 
And in fact, I'm going to get the d5 point back for a start. So I'm also going to get a potential attacking the king. So after h4, he actually can't take the pawn, which is what I didn't see. Like, I did not see that. So he has to maybe go back to the start square or something. He can't do. And then maybe I can just continue with h5 and probably try to open this diagonal up even further for the bishop with h6. This could be very annoying for him. But I played knight d4 instead. Which is able to try to get my queen out of castle queen side. She took, and I played queen takes d4, and knight e6 as expected to cover the mate with temple. I go back to d2 to also protect the mc2 point, and I replace c5. Very aggressive move. I maybe designed it with castle and queen side. Now I think probably I should have gone short, because at the end of the day I've got a positional advantage because I've acquired the two bishops in an open position. So I shouldn't need to take unnecessary risks, risks. I should just, cast, should just castle short, but the problem is he's just still have quite a few um, open files with my king, like he can bring his queen out to here. Well, not in this position actually, because that drops a pawn. But what he can do is maybe play knight back to g5. Is that potentially dangerous? In fact, with ad1, still pretty good. If bishop... With bishop back, then maybe I can play something like queen here to hit the um, probe to g7 point and force something like f6, which is not a very good move. In fact, it wins this pawn. But I rather stupidly and suicidally castles queen side right into open files that ended my king but I did I do have this nice bishop protecting it I'm also attacking his pawn and then he, play, and then he played d4 and interestingly enough it's actually, it's actually very dangerous to take I thought it was perfectly safe and actually my king could have come under fire the first which is not good at all because I took it he took out the C bomb, which opens the C file for his rook, and the potential rook C8 cheapos. Um, and now, I can't think of anything better to do than to take it and bite the bullet. Because I'd seen that if he plays this continuation, you have to rook C8, I've got, I can easily protect it. What I was more worried about is um, after this, if he just moves his queen. Or something. Or maybe chucks in rook c8 actually. Because if I take his queen he can take his c2 with check. And he's also got discovery next move. And this is actually, this is actually very awkward this. I've got a place of like c4. Right in front of my king. And then he's got like this check here. Which is quite dangerous. And he can get away with this. But he played rook c8 first, and now I have to find a defensive position. Instead, I, I was absolutely completely knackered. I couldn't think more than about one move ahead, and I completely blundered in this position. Now I think I have to play c4. But again, we've got knight takes, queen takes, and then queen e7, hitting knight a3 point and the bishop. So that is not good. And what else have I got? If I played bishop c3, it takes my queen, I have to take the king. Other rook um, swings across. I have to block with this bishop. And then we've got this. And there is um, about 52 pieces bully in my position. So it seems there's actually no defense. Seems like I've already gone wrong by castle and queen side. So I, pl I played c3, thinking it survives, but the problem is it just takes everything off. I think I might have had a strong view in this position as well. My engine is completely freezing all the time. But what he played was pretty strong anyway. Actually, I think I've got the move order wrong. I think he took the, he took the knight first, I remember now. Well, let's say, I think he, took, he used this move order first. Was that? 
got Butterfingers today. Queen takes d4. And yes, actually, he had, he had stronger actually with Queen e7, which forks the bishop in a3 point. I'm, I think I've got to give the bishop up. Because if I try something like this. Then my king has to come to d2, and in fact to get my um, queen pinned to my king rather embarrassingly, so I've dropped that wins a piece actually. But what he played wins a pawn because if I go to um, b2, I get I lose the bishop. So I've got to go this way, and he takes this, and it's just completely lost. I'm a pawn down. I've got a very open king, and I'd given up by now. Except that I'm just gonna, this has been a horrible tournament, and I've. I've blown many chances early in the event to um, get good positions and mess them up. So I sort of played a bit of suicidal chess in that last few moves. This is okay, but then he plays this. Nearly mates me. I've got to play this and then this, and then it drops a pawn. Drops another pawn. Oh, I've got a pawn back. Oh, this is getting better. Whoops, another pawn back. It's dust. It's a dumb, dumb, dumb. Another pawn back. It's dust. Oh yes, I might get a perpetual. Whoops, if I play rook takes f7, he plays rook f4 check, so I resigned. And that was a completely disastrous last game, and a prime example of how not to play 1b3. And so I finished on 3.5 out of 11, thing, but my performances probably did deserve maybe one or two more points. I actually even lost 3 day points in the end, so my 3 day is dropping even more. Not that it could get any lower as it is. My ECF also took a hammer in as well, with about 10 points. And apart from a good win over 1-6-4 in the um, league, it's been generally quite a poor start to the season. With all them draws against low rated at Leeds. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed my coverage of the 2013 Major Open and two rapid plays as well from the British Championships. Um, and I'd, be, I'd appreciate it if you could do, maybe do me a few favours. Um, I have a Facebook page um, called Tim Milton's Quest to Qualify for the um, British Championships. You can hit the like button for that and also the E46 Defence page on YouTube. I shall put links in the description box as well as the PGN for the game. Also I'd recommend you could maybe subscribe to the channel because it is free and you will be notified of new videos. And I'll be doing a mega series on the British Championships as well because I'm going to do some other people's games as well. So it's going to be a massive series. Maybe in future would turn into a DVD or something. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if you like the videos, please recommend them to your friends because views and subscribers are still pretty low. Um, but for now, I hope you enjoyed my coverage of it. Um, the end credits are now where it'll just be me for the end credits. And of course, the British Championship for organising it. But for now, um, please leave in the comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.